Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Today, we've got a brand new story to share with you, so let's begin. My day started off like any other day. I woke up early, got myself cleaned up, gave Amelia a goodbye kiss while she was still sleeping, and drove to my construction job. But there was something unexpected waiting for me. That normal day turned into something extraordinary later in the evening. While I was working at the construction site, I felt my phone buzzing in my pocket. I took it out and saw a message from my neighbor, Mike. It said, Dustin, your garage door is open. I found it strange because I distinctly remember closing it. I thanked Mike and asked him to close it if he didn't mind, he agreed, and I went back to work. However, I couldn't get the open garage door out of my mind. I didn't know why, but something felt a little strange. Trusting my instincts, I decided to take an early lunch and drove back home. As I got closer to my house, my heart rate started to increase. I saw an unfamiliar car parked in my driveway, a car I had never seen before. At that moment, a sick new feeling washed over me. I parked my truck quietly on the street and approached my own house without making any noise. I opened the side door that led to the garage, and to my surprise, it wasn't locked. The door that led from the garage into the house wasn't locked either. As I walked through the house without wearing my shoes, I stumbled upon the most devastating scene, there was Emily, my wife, on all fours, and a stranger ramming her from behind. My wife's moans filled the room, the man held her by her waist and kept ramming, occasionally landing a spank, making her white skin turn red. My wife screamed words of encouragement to hit harder. All this happened right in front of me. I was consumed by anger, everything seemed blurry, and I felt like I was about to throw up. Stepping back a bit, I took out my phone, made sure the flash was off, and snapped a few pictures of them kissing. I recorded a short video of them together in my house. It was in that moment that I realized going violent would just land me in trouble. Revenge would be served the best way to get back at Emily would be to make her fully grasp what she was losing. It was time for a clever plan, one that would allow me to come out of the situation with my dignity intact. After witnessing what I did, I took a moment to catch my breath. I silently walked away from the house, my heart heavy like a lump of lead, but with a plan in mind. I decided to reach out to a friend who was a lawyer. I told my lawyer friend everything that had happened and sought his guidance. Since we lived in North Carolina, I needed some evidence to potentially reduce the amount of alimony I might have to pay. I had the proof and showed it to my lawyer friend. I know he wasn't a divorce lawyer, he pointed me in the right direction and helped me understand the necessary steps to protect myself. He provided me with the contact information of a highly regarded divorce lawyer who could assist me. According to him, she was quite skilled. When I met with the divorce lawyer, I didn't waste any time laying out all the details. She explained that North Carolina was a no-fault state, but cheating could impact the alimony payments for the spouse receiving support. We worked on the necessary paperwork for the divorce and discussed our plan going forward. Emily had no clue about what was happening. A few days later, my lawyer and I arranged to meet Emily at a local cafe. She was surprised to see me there and confusion filled her wide eyes as she asked, Dustin, what's going on? I slid the divorce papers across the table, and Emily's expression changed from confusion to shock. Stuttering, she said, Dustin, I don't understand. Looking at her, my heart aching, I replied, Emily, I think you do. I saw you with him. Her face turned pale, and I could see the realization sinking in. Tears streamed down her face as she apologized. Despite the pain, I knew my decision was the right one. Eventually, Emily refused to sign the divorce papers. By that time, I had already moved out of our house and found a small apartment for myself. Since the house belonged to Emily's parents, I wasn't concerned about that aspect. The day after she received the divorce papers, her parents offered financial support so she could hire her own lawyer. However, her parents were unaware of why I was divorcing their daughter and I assumed Emily wouldn't tell them either. So, I decided to show Emily's parents the photos and video I took when I caught her with that guy in our home. I mailed a package to them explaining why I was divorcing their daughter. Around six weeks later, during the divorce hearing, her parents didn't show up. My lawyer informed me that she was going to attempt to ask for alimony. 
She mentioned it was unlikely to succeed, but she wanted to keep me informed. After hearing what my wife's attorney said on her behalf, they claimed I wasn't a good provider and had been mentally offensive in court. My wife kept lying repeatedly, at one point, the judge warned her to ensure the accuracy of her statements because lying in court could lead to trouble, which she was doing. Fortunately, we presented the evidence to the judge, and he granted me the divorce without awarding her any alimony. The judge gave me exactly 30 days to retrieve the remainder of my belongings from the house. I only had a couple of boxes left to collect. About three months after the divorce, I made arrangements to retrieve my things. As I pulled into the driveway, I noticed the same car that I saw that day parked there. Seeing his car initially stunned, but the feeling quickly faded, this time, the garage door was deliberately left open so that I could collect my belongings. Emily had sent me a message asking to get together at some point, and I received that message one day. I consented, wondering what it was that she needed. We had our first meeting in the restaurant where I had previously presented her with the divorce papers. She did not appear to be the self-assured and contented woman that she had been in the past, but rather a pale reflection of her previous self. She started talking, detailing how difficult life had been for her, expressing regret for the decisions she had made, and admitting how much she had missed me. Despite this, I experienced a sense of distancing and indifference toward her comments. I remained silent for the entirety of her speech. After that, I turned to her and said, Emily, I hope everything works out for you. However, that part of my life is now in the past. Even when I made it clear that I had made up my mind, she kept attempting to change my mind. She said that she was done with the other person and that she wanted us to be back together. As I was leaving the coffee shop, I came to the realization that I had emerged victorious, not because Emily was sorry or upset about the situation, but because I had arrived at a place of contentment inside myself. My life had been turned around, and I had found my inner strength and gone on with my life. I started over, piecing my life together one step at a time. The best form of retribution did not involve physical conflict or public disgrace, it was about moving forward in life with more resilience and insight than I had before. After roughly seven months, Emily's father passed away from cancer. He never once expressed regret for the first rage he showed toward me upon learning that we were divorcing. However, her mother did apologize, and she extended an invitation to attend the funeral service. I was on the verge of backing out of going, but I didn't have any problems with her mother. I am not the kind of person who nurses ill will toward others, the past cannot be changed. As the weeks passed, rumors began to spread that Emily was getting into even more legal trouble as the situation continued to escalate. She was arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol one weekend, and her current partner was involved in offensive activities, including trafficking pills from her mother's home. How did I come to know all of this? Her mother still gets in touch with me every once in a while. Although our marriage lasted for only eight years before it ended, and she would have been entitled to spousal support for approximately half of that time, she didn't pursue it. Nonetheless, it did have an effect on the conclusion that was reached. I really wanted to find the other guy and release some steam on him. I was advised against it by my lawyer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more stories like this. See you next time.